Hey, what is up, everyone? How are you guys doing? I'm fine, Rich. Thanks. <laughs> I actually put my camera in a new spot. You were teasing me a lot. <laughs> I had camera um, uh, paranoia. <laughs> oh, really? Did I tease you about your camera? I didn't know. No. No, no, no. You just mentioned it. What it was is I had just moved my Cintiq to this spot. So um, I didn't have anything to put the like mount the webcam on. And so um, there's like a CD rack that sits right here, but it's at a weird angle. So when my webcam is on it. It shoots me from like a super like profile -y, uh angle. <laughs> so look. Yeah, it looks I, I mean, I, I look like I got I need to pull my neck over. It looks like my neck is like made over oh, to I, one side, like two side. <laughs> Dude, I think I have, for the new year, I'm going to change everything up. I'm going to do a new camera angle, some new you, background. Look, 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 change it see, up. Do you see in the background? I put your color pieces up. I oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> they used to be black and white. I sent you a photo of it. Yeah, I like how you have like a, a shrine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's like if I'm going to sit there for 10 hours a day, I should at least look at something that gets me excited. Not, not that the other stuff doesn't, but you know what I mean? Like... Uh, when you see your dream coming true, you might as well embrace it. Andrew Tazo one says Kelsey keeps getting more and more handsome, and frankly, it's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Kelsey and I both joke if we clean up a little bit and drop some weight, we both would be decent looking guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, trust your feelings. Trust your feelings. <laughs> you know it to be true. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Well, hello, well, everyone. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. Can Got you some see how visuals? Many Hans Roger Oslin, Richard Friends here. It's good to see him. Uh, was Hassan chatting. Walla. Hassan Has Walla. Huh? What's interesting is Hassan is uh, his name is Jay. I think I mentioned that a few weeks ago, but I'm pretty sure he spells his name like Jay Lee, like J A E, right? Is that you, Hassan? You're Jay? I knew a guy named James Lee, and he would sign his art Jim Lee. <laughs> And he's like, I could do that. I'm like, yeah, but come on. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of confusion between Stanley, Jim Lee, and Jay Lee. Honestly, like that's not like unusual, especially if you're just getting into comics. You know, um, obviously Stan and Jim are sort of further apart now than they were at one point. But you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, a lot of people could actually have jumped to or connected the dots of like. Oh, maybe Stan Lee is like Jim Lee, or Jim Lee is Stan Lee's um, son, you know? I used to think that. I used yeah. to actually think that Stan Lee's name was Stan Lee. Right. And, and that he was somehow related to Jim Lee, you right. know, and, and Jay Lee. I used to think they were all, and I didn't think, I didn't know that uh, Jim was uh, Asian American or Korean, right. I think is original yeah, answer. Yeah. I, I didn't, I thought he was more like, um, uh, who's the writer of that? Claremont. I thought right. for some reason I pictured the way Claremont sure. looks with the like military vests and the. Oh, right. <laughs> I like don't know why. Francis Ford yeah. or something or um, Stanley Kubrick. They wear like the flak jacket. It's like, dude, you're making a he's movie. Got, you're not going to war. Yeah, he's got pencils all tucked in, you know. The, and the, the, <laughs> the, the, the blues traveler was like that with um, uh, harmonicas. Did you ever see that? Right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There was an, so this is actually funny that you said that. There is an artist that I followed online for 10 or 15 years, and his name escapes me right now. I thought forever that he was Asian. I didn't know like what nationality, but I would have bet a million dollars that he was Asian. And I was looking at his Instagram. I was like, oh man, okay, like he isn't. I is his last name is like Wu, or he or the way that he does his um the way that he uh like his username uh like you see that in it i, I wish i had a name like that like you know because those are good for artists woo you know mm -hmm. or uh splat you know stephen platt making right. splat you know i love that frega yeah. is a great like name people can remember uh, right friend also richard friend come on like the, who's gonna forget that you, you know, I honestly, Kelsey I, Shannon. I get mixed up with a lot of girls. Right. I always thought your name was cool, though. To be honest, um, I was. I was. It's well. Well, the nice thing too is that there's no confusion when you look look you up. You know, it's not like there's like you know six six versions of it, or you know what I mean. Like, that's true. I'm I'm very. Uh, I am lucky, and that's kind of why one of the reasons why I enjoyed embracing my names because there's not. I don't. There may be one other Kelsey. Right that does indie comics or something and it's a girl it's not i'm the only guy 
<laughs> the right. only guy Kelsey. So there actually is another Kelsey Shannon that's an artist. Uh, I don't know if it's Kelsey Shannon, but Kelsey uh -oh. definitely oh. with the name Kelsey. But I think it's a woman or a girl. I don't. I don't know. I, I just saw. I was like, oh, I thought I was the only one. There's a British. Well, there's a British painter named Richard Friend and uh, Richard I ain't your friend, and that's actually very funny. And I actually, in some ways, I feel sorry for him because you know he's trying to brand himself. We both, I've been online longer than he has, and what's funny is he actually kind of looks like me too, which is a little weird. Um, but uh, <laughs> I saw. Well, it's picture. like Andrew Andrew Robinson. You look up Andrew Robinson, and you get like an old blues player, you know, blues right. guitarist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sure he hates that I exist because it's like it's got to be so annoying when he wants to promote his art and all that comes up is a bunch of David Finch Batman stuff that I inked. You know? <laughs> well, I think with Andrew Robinson, I think they they like talked and we're like, yeah, hey, let's just promote each other. You know, I think. Oh right. I remember, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I remember something about that. They were like. You know, so. So, so this was gonna. This was Kelsey's recommendation. We were gonna do this next week, and what we wanted to do is we were gonna do one more of the Frazetta influence chain, and then we wanted to really like mix it up and do something completely different. One passion that Kelsey and I both have, and really what what cinched me on um, Kelsey is the colors for the book. Is he really understand understood how much concept art meant to Blaster Kid and the the visual idea that i had for it yeah i mean <laughs> are you, you yeah, know I, I was upset we were both gelling on the same thing you know like uh wanting to see you know s that same kind of illustrative right you know look in comics but and in fact that I, I talked about this with other people like mitch and i i was convinced i was like there's no way that those guys can do comics because it, right. it would they take like a week to do a piece sure and then it kind of dawned on me i was like well maybe i can do it right like right at the exact same time uh, right. richard was talking about you know this is the kind of stuff i'd like i'm like that's like right on same thing i was thinking <laughs> which is which is great though because there's not a lot of people doing it so so do you know who robot pencil is uh it's anthony jones <laughs> Sounds familiar. He's great. He does, he does a lot of great illustrations that are painted. Oh, that is funny. I didn't notice that. <laughs> That's what oh, you just said the in in the in the in our private chat. Well, you just said so something weird. like that. I didn't realize that was in the cup. That's hysterical. <laughs> so so like like we were both like a little. I wouldn't say nervous would be the right word, but look, there's a lot of, of stress and stuff going on in the atmosphere right now and it is difficult to come on live and just pretend like like it's like it looks weird if you don't say anything like like i always say that it's almost worse but but we get that look like everybody is is anxious and all that um but you know we have a schedule that we keep and we wanted to do something fun but i i said um i made some joke about something to kelsey in the pri uh, uh like a text and then i said something about right meow <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was. It's funny because you were you were like, I think we're gonna push it later because I got all this stuff, and I'm like, I was sitting there thinking, oh, it's like, what am I gonna say? And I was like, and I finally was like, I, you know, I'm just honest to a fault. I was like, I, actually, I'm looking for a way out of this. Right. <laughs> and you were like, well, let's just make it fun. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't really mean I'm I'm gonna get out of this, but I felt the same way because I I I was tea this morning. <laughs> I was a little I was a little stressed out. I was a little um I said we've had construction going on on and off for about five or six days and it's been very distracting and uh it's it's definitely kind of screwed up my schedule. So I hadn't had time to prepare for the Jeffrey mm -hmm. Catherine Jones video. So it was I was getting stressed out because I was like it takes about 90 minutes for me really to gather all the images together and and you know check the folders, make sure that I don't have little files that are, you know, 300 pixels big or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, anyway, so yeah, so so Kelsey had said, why don't we do art station and just we're just going to go through it. Whatever catches our eye, we're going to go down the rabbit hole just like you would if you were at home. Yeah, I don't I'm pretty sure others do this as well. But we talk about this quite often, like a couple times a week. You know, we're like, I've gone down the rabbit hole. I'm on art station. And it, it just it's it seems to be endless. And it's a 
I don't know how they promote artists, but I have not seen a bad piece yet. I've seen pieces oh. that are better than others, but right. I don't think I've seen a bad one. <laughs> I, I, would, I would actually agree. There, there are some people's galleries that are more appealing to me than others. Um, oh, yeah. what I was going to say, because I had brought up Anthony Jones, or uh, yeah, An Robot Pencil Anthony Jones. My point was, Anthony is phenomenal. We'll definitely take a peek at his work on ArtStation while we're there. Um, but I actually spoke to Anthony on the phone. He's he's very, very famous concept artist. Like, he's a big deal. Um, and uh, he was interested in doing comics. And so I reached out to him. And we've talked on the phone a few times. And I said, hey, I go, if you ever want to get uh, your comic together, let me know and I can help you. And he's actually a pretty big, like, he loves Adam Hughes. He loves Travis. Um, and... Uh, what was interesting is, though, that, that there's a big hurdle. This has been a dream of his for years. I've heard him talk about it online for five or six years, but it's very, very difficult to get a, an appropriate look of concept art into sequential art and have it have the balls that comic art has. Well, because there's also, uh, I mean, you take so much time getting the lighting just right, and then you realize there's six other panels on the page, you know, and they're they're... They're all in the same scene, but somebody yeah. has a torch and it changes the lighting dynamics. Somebody has whatever. I mean, it's when you're yeah. doing fully rendered work, uh, if you leave something unconsidered, right. uh, it looks unfinished. So right. it, that's one of the pitfalls of that. And it, it, it's, uh, I've been, luckily, I've been thinking about this kind of stuff for a long, long time. So, uh, you know, I got my shortcuts. Right. Ready to go. <laughs> right. And, 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 you know, it's like, uh, without like, like they use, uh, photo, photo manipulation in the pieces. There's 3D models. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Right. There's, there's 3D models that are going on. There's no hard lines like in a comic book drawing. And if you have hard lines and you start obscuring them, then with photo textures or really hot colors or whatever. Um, you know, it, it won't, it won't feel like a comic book. It'll feel like an art of book or something like that, you know? Yeah. And I, I've, um, uh, I have, I've had this thing for a long, long time where, you know, a lot of, for, for a minute there, colorists were almost completely obliterating the, the ink line and coming from being an inker and having a lot of respect for that craft, I, I've, like came up with this way of uh, doing color holds and stuff, but you can always still see the ink work no matter what. I never go full blast, you know? <laughs> right. Now on the, the piece that's right behind me with the two sort of um, uh, thug guys, when you colored that, the one thing that really separated your piece from everyone else's, and there was a couple that were colored similarly, but you had almost like an optical, like there was this weird, almost like photo, I don't want to call it like a lens flare, but there was this weird clarity that the light seemed to have coming through the smoke that I couldn't not be completely blown away by. It really floors me. And I love, um, it's difficult to see here, but um, the blues that you did on the guy in the foreground on his jacket, like I swear to God, I could stare at that all day. It looks so <laughs> cool. I go to grays on a lot of that stuff. That The sun is actually uh, a photograph. I'm pretty sure the sun is a photograph. Right, right. And I built, I built a lot of everything else around that. Right. You know, but uh, it has yeah, because there was a specific quality of light that uh, you know, was yeah. you know that kind of light coming through a dust, you know. Yeah, look. It looks so good. And don't be afraid of that. Other uh, guys that are coloring, even if you're coloring traditional comic art, um, if you're looking through for reference or just trying to get an idea, and you see like a photograph that has like, oh, that's perfect color, just grab it and throw it on a layer and just sample the colors out of it. I do that all the time. I think tons of people do that. I, I mean, yeah. when they do it to other comic book artists work too, I see it all the time. Like, you know, Alex Sinclair would be someone that I think a lot of people sample what he does. Cause he's just such an iconic colorist, you know? Yeah. I, I some of those guys have such clarity. I, I've been really obsessing over Joe, Joe Chiodo or Chido. I don't know how you say his name. I saw you say Chido. I've always said Kaido, and I've never been corrected. I've never heard like Scott Williams say it differently. So I think it's Chido. Well, he colors in a very 
what I would consider European, where uh, he uses color temperature to establish cool, you know, darks and lights. So it never goes too dark because he doesn't dip below a certain value level or saturation. So like he'll just use blues, cool, cool colors to establish darkness. And um, that's a real trick. I always want to go like just dark, you know, but I don't know. Some of these guys, especially European guys, how they use color temperature. Yeah. Just, you blew you blew my mind. So Kelsey went on, I guess, Heritage, and he found three very very old pieces that Joe Chido did. But what's crazy <laughs> is these pieces are from 1978. He's been around <laughs> 17, 17 years before I first saw his work. I couldn't believe that. Well, I, I was a huge but long. Uh, I think before, you know, he's I even was aware of him. Yeah, uh, I had all a lot of those magazines because I had right. a really good store that had boxes and boxes of old Conan's right. and and uh, Alien Worlds and those right. kinds of books. So I scooped up all that stuff, and I didn't. I never put two and two together until I was researching him lately, and I was like, "Holy cow! This <laughs> wow. this guy is a legend, and nobody is really aware of it." I'm sure some people are. The black and white shark piece that you sent me looked a lot like Jeffrey Jones, actually. That's why I said it. I'm like, he's yeah. actually right. Yeah. He must have been a teenager yeah. inspired by all that stuff. I, I think 100%. There's no doubt in my mind. Those uh, Were they Conan covers that you sent me? Yeah, Conan. And uh, I don't know what that pen and ink one was. Just probably a magazine spot a right. that he sold. Okay, um, so let's let's head into Art Station so that we don't procrastinate on the kids too long. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this will be really, really fun, and we're going to just go on a wild, wild ride. So I'm going to, I guess I share my screen? Uh, yeah. So I'll, share I'll watch the chat. Uh, okay. You guys have any questions, I'll, I'll be watching or comments. And application window, and I uh, guess I do... Uh, Andrew Taz one says, uh, I'd never reveal your secrets, Kelsey. Okay. <laughs> I'm an open book. I got no secrets because as okay. uh, I think uh, a writer once said, um, everybody's got a pencil, but not everyone can create a masterpiece. So yeah. I, I let everybody know the tricks of the trade. It's up to you to make it sing, you know. No, you know, and that's exactly how I feel. I used to be more paranoid about like, like. Uh, giving out secrets, quote unquote. Now I don't care. I'm like, you know what? Um, my thought is, it's it's like where where I excel is. It's going to be my imagination and my spin on it more than um, anything else. I'm just opening yeah. up my my iPad so I can it's see the. Spin on it more than, um, Lately, uh, Hans Roger also says uh, retro retro colors 60s and backwards and pop color psychedelic I, i've actually been doing that for the last several years is is working from the original uh i guess 60s marvel palette which is you know it's very limited but it's amazing what you can accomplish at least in your base coloring with just that and then you can like modify it and add grads and things like that but it's like, man, that that palette has worked for so many books. It might be a great way to like not have to overthink it. It's like just use what they had, keep it simple, and then build on that. So, um, oh wait, Richard Dunn, twenty twenty five dollars. Thank you, Richard. Oh my gosh. Rich, rich, oh, yeah. it's rich. Rich, <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Money is tight for me right now. I actually said that to Kelsey in a chat yesterday, so he knows that I'm actually not bullshitting. But um, I was tempting him with a bunch of art books. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. it was. I was like, I don't have money for art books right now. Um, the next three months will be tricky, making the transition into the Blaster Kid campaign, but it's all right. Um, but uh, so, well, he says so, here, uh, for 25, let me finish reading. Uh, Rich, it's Rich. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you for doing this. Richard. Not a problem. It's it's our pleasure. It was it was like I said, we were both a little nervous, I think, or a little stressed out. It's just a very like intense time, man. So I've got I've got art station open and it's putting a smile on my face immediately because I'm just like, oh, which where do you go? I know which the which thumbnail do I click? So I'm gonna pick this. This looks like a very unusual piece, and then we'll either follow who he follows. We'll, we can we can just we'll just 
let it roll. So this was we a should tricky. let uh, we should let chat pick one one of the oh. one of the times we go down oh. the rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is like, how, how clear can you? Oh, that looks nice. Okay, you can't see it. Look at how beautiful the lighting is on this. Is it blurry in the background? Because he's got so much depth with the blurry. Yeah. And the fork. He's he's got um. It looks like um the the brush strokes that he used on these trees um to the left of the dinosaurs or whatever they are is just real strokey it looks like a square brush with like a lot of like texture on it the grass to me almost looks like a 3d model of some sort and the background is like painted um and it is a little blurry like a little soft focusy now what do you where do you stand on like blurs i'm not a huge fan of blurs unless um i really feel that like it should be blurry you know mm -hmm. like there's that it's blurry but um in general i mean it's like a it's a spice like anything don't you think yeah yeah i mean i, I love the way it seems like they're doing it in this piece where they're using right uh less detail to define right you know the, uh, out of it, focus yeah and it, it looks it looks fine i think it's great and then the thing is is he's got very clear points and very um like um I'm a big fan of, of painted work, like traditional or digital. And so um, the hardest part for me as a traditional artist is, is like, how do I make trees in the background look like they're dissolving? You know, how do I get that, that uh, atmospheric um, decay? Yeah, uh, I guess uh, you do a certain level of it with ink and then a certain level with, you know, color and try to like, you know, but, but you have to be really singing with your with your collaborators in that level. What is that? Three D. I am trying to figure out what it is right now. In fact, um, almost look like clay sculptures, but they're standing look, on like one foot. So it does look like clay. Uh, let me see what it says. I really want to get into that because I know that um, he did this. In, uh, he did this in VR. Oh, okay. The sketch in VR. I've seen, I follow some guys on YouTube that do, I don't know what it's called. I forget, it's Quill, I think, Quill. It's like this art program that you do in, in VR Fuck, where you man. can literally like sculpt your your pen and ink drawing in three-dimensional space. Right. It's <laughs> There's a, there's a video on YouTube that, that one of my patrons had sent me a link to, and it's it's titled something like "This is a Game Changer," um, and it's it's he shows how to take a sketch of your character and basically trace it in I want to say Blender, and then mm. you can't you can't actually create a 3D model of your character that way. I, I mean, you and I have talked about this. 3D is beautiful. It's so fun. It looks like a neat thing. In terms of a work pipeline for myself, it's yeah. not ever going to happen. Uh, there's some stuff I'd like to mess with just for fun, uh, if somehow like to incorporate it into an advertising or something. But uh, before the 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 uh, virtual reality stuff was starting, they had this thing um, where they would have like a sphere and then open the sphere up and then you would paint the entire 360 piece of art and then it would rewrap it and kind of stick you in the middle of it so that you can like move move the cursor around and see the you know the environment that was painted and i saw some guys doing um i forget those video games uh uh, uh overwatch i see okay. like guys doing overwatch paintings where you're in the middle of the battle and you can like literally look anywhere even like down you know up it was crazy this I, is, man i'd love to mess with that uh, is this this is insanely cool what this per, this artist did lloyd allen um i i'm really actually impressed by this this is like a whole scene that he like animated he said he did a sketch a day in this program so i'm assuming it's a bar fight um and it looks like he just sort of animated the whole thing it's really incredible this uh, I, I don't know I <laughs> I'd love to get into that it just seems like the learning curve you know yeah. when I'm rich I'll do this maybe <laughs> right right yeah like take a summer and just goof around with it look at this whole little setup it looks so fun 
we were just talking about someone using 3D and it being look, looking kind of stiff, I guess, with Poser, but this right. looks very natural. I mean, right. Well, because it looks like it was more molded in clay. And so it's a little, I mean, it's, it's also, look, the difference between molding something in clay or ZBrush and using an uh, articulated figure is very different. It's two totally different worlds. Uh, there was a, this pirate show, um, Black Sails, that had this oh, opener. Yeah. Do you remember that opener where they had like this, uh, it was like a whalebone that was carved into all these ornate figures, skeleton guys and stuff like that. It was all done with like the ZBrush thing or whatever, but it was very real looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'll pull up Robot Pencil really quick for you. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to see what he's looking at. Oh, and, and you know, okay, so Anthony actually was a huge influence on me hopping onto YouTube. Um, I loved I loved listening to him talk about art. He was so open and candid about his techniques. He loves helping other artists. It was ev like, he, it checked every box um, that got me excited about art. And he's very, very creative. So I'm gonna show you some iconic pieces and styles. And really, whenever you see work that kind of looks like this, it is actually sort of his. I I credit him for this this look. Mm. Um, uh, I always go back to uh, Richard Mullins. Oh, C Craig Mullins. Craig Mullins. Craig Mullins. Yeah. But I mean, he even wasn't really the first. But no, no, no. But Anthony Anthony took this black and white look and just really went to town with it. They sometimes kind of manicure their um, their uh, their pages a little too much. He does a lot of stuff like this with um, oh, wow. uh, the what do you call it? pyramid head <laughs> kind of vibe. I always liked that character from uh, Silent Hill. Is that what it is? Yeah, from the movie. I never played any of the games. Well, I played yeah. that game. Yeah, uh, Triangle Head. <laughs> yeah. This looks like a piece where he scribbled some stuff and then made yeah, something out of it. He does. So I've actually bought almost every single Gumroad that that Anthony has done, and yeah. uh, they're fantastic learning tools. Oh my god, it's it's like I have so many. <laughs> no, what is that? What are you talking about, Gumroad? Gumroad is similar to like um, iTunes for artists or something along the lines of that, or like Spotify where. You like say you did a tutorial and you wanted to sell a thirty minute tutorial on how to flat a page. You can mm. upload it to Gumroad and then just sell it there. Five bucks, twenty five bucks, whatever you oh. want to cost. <laughs> yeah. And so, the only downside of Gumroad that I've ever found is you cannot search the site. I think it's the stupidest. That's the mm. stupidest oversight ever. I don't know why it's like that, but you cannot search. So you have to know the artist and look them up specifically like through google it's really mm. annoying that is annoying it's such a shame well because like for me okay a couple of months ago i wanted to get um a, a tutorial on how to draw like sci-fi weapons like creating sci-fi weapons what's the thought process behind it i'm sure someone's done a tutorial on it you know i couldn't search the site to find anything i just do shapes yeah <laughs> just cool shapes and then you add like little couple little details and maybe some lights Boom. <laughs> so uh, the Drez uh, 1210 says he got he did cool future Street Fighter character designs. Anthony did? I guess so, yeah. Okay, so that? that's, it's just a weird monster thing. He's really, really good with drapery. He's really good with anatomy. And then um, his color choices are always just beautiful. Uh, these are obviously just exploration shots, right? right? Just like yeah. kind of playing with the tools and seeing you know yeah uh, what you can achieve out of it i mean that's right it's very abstract i mean would you wouldn't probably put that in a game it's interesting too because if you actually look at his characters when he tries to draw characters i mean you can definitely see him he struggled oh, wow. he struggles a tiny bit more with that but he's very uh, open about um you know learning how to um cartoon more you know mm -hmm. well i mean this just looks you know, like uh, not a creature per se, but like it's almost like a, a, a siren, you know, where they lure you in and then you realize that's not all what it seems. Something's off. <laughs> yeah. 
he gives yeah, great cool. tips on um uh like programs and stuff that you can use that will help uh, help your workflow and stuff like that so let's go into anthony's following and then you pick a, a thumbnail or or like i'll just start to scroll down slowly if to his likes go to his likes oh, okay does he have okay. likes yeah right. that's easier because you could do it by the piece and be you like just tell, me, tell me which one looks interesting just if you can describe it a little bit and then i'll um we can head that way uh hmm. pretty picky i like the girl in the yellow coat about four rows down this yeah, right here kind of like that i always tend to go for the cartoony so the artist's name is magdalena dianova Nova. and that is nice that is really cool i'm gonna follow her and give the her a hair, like. i like how the hair it's it's uh everything is is long i mean the hair the the design yeah. on the pants she's pretty and then too. It's, yeah and then he cuts the shape with this with the jacket you know making it wide at the top it's almost like a lollipop or something you know <laughs> yeah um it's interesting this top one almost has a tiny bit of like an andrew robinson feel a little yeah. james Blit with the hand or maybe even keith giffen <laughs> it's probably just a coincidence but yeah i see there's a, a new kind of disney style uh since that paper paper chase or whatever that short film was and uh, also the the I forget the design. He's the character designer of uh, Big Hero Six. Oh, okay. And and then there's also the cover artist Helen Chen. Um, and there's this style of face that's been permeating. Okay. Uh, a lot of design. I like it. It's very cute. You know. Do it's you know? Huh? Do you know Luwash's stuff? Uh, maybe I don't. Names yeah. sometimes elude me. She's got like 1.3 or 1.8 million like followers on Instagram, and she was she was huge on DeviantArt is where I first saw her stuff. She spells it L O I S H. I want to mm. say she's maybe um, I think she lives somewhere in like Norway or something like that. She's really really good, um, but uh, she's got a very Disney esque style. So let's check out a few more. Right, real quick, real quick. I like uh, that this is a it's got a rough pencil line, and mm -hmm. I've often wondered like why don't we just do comics or why can't we just do comics like this you know where it's not inked it's it's just right. straight color art is that too off for america i guess as long as it works or what um i think i think it goes back to what i was saying with the the concept art there's there's um a, a weight that inking gives and i'm not pitching it as is someone who's who's inked for a long time but i think, I think it's a softer look and so the problem is is that it lacks dynamics across mm. many pages it looks great for a piece like this and even a couple of pages but if you have a really really dynamic sequence it's it's there's something a little too soft a little bit it's it's mm. tough to point so this is an interesting thing um i i don't know if uh, you can see it here they do the thing with the foot and it always drives me nuts it's a pet peeve of mine when the outside foot looks like the inside foot this <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so many people do that and it's such a weird thing it's like the arch the uh, the uh, yeah like the arch of the foot is on the inside this this should have a um different uh contour i'm trying to get my feet like the way norman rockwell like if you look at his shoes yeah there, there's like um, I don't even know how to describe it. There's like a, a round. Uh, I don't even know. How to, I couldn't even put it into words. <laughs> These oh, are yeah, not yeah. It's fun. She draws very skinny people. It reminds me almost of like postcard art. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of uh, uh, Hans Roger says uh, Jamie Hewlett take, uh, and I think there's whether this artist is aware of it or not uh there's definitely some gorillas influence right <laughs> it reminds me a little of shag do you remember shag's work even though yeah she, she doesn't draw like shag but shag was hot as a pistol man mm -hmm. yeah i got one of his books actually he's really good i have i have a shag book too it's funny hey victor rodriguez for a dollar says Thank you, victor dollar <laughs> that's all <laughs> no. 
Uh, yeah, so go. you should go to her likes and see. Uh, okay. I, I'm wondering, this is another thing that's fun to look at is to see when you see someone that's very like, cartoony like that. Yeah. And you go in their likes, sometimes you'll see nothing but like 3D models or paintings. Right. And you're like, that's interesting that you're, you're, yeah. your interests are so diverse. Anthony joked about uh, people hiding their influences. Like they don't want to like stuff <laughs> like someone in their work. It's funny. Artists are so weird. I want to just take a peek at this really fast. The colors on well, this. Well, let's go with this. Let's okay. just go down this rabbit hole. This is pretty. Man. Thomas Mc, McHoud. Yeah, I'm gonna follow you. I'm I like like it's funny because uh, uh, like you know nowadays like you can get in trouble for who you follow like if you don't know what their <laughs> whatever is. Like, really? I, well, yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. People will look through your stuff and they'll go, "Hey, why do you follow this person? This person is da 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 da." And I'm oh, like, "Oh yeah." I follow 2,300 people on Instagram. I don't know yeah. what the fuck they're all about. If they're, I never if, pay attention. So <laughs> if I, I don't like if someone follows me on Twitter, I'll look at their page. If they if if it looks like it's mostly art, I'll follow them back. I don't think it's. I uh, uh, I retweeted someone. Uh, I just thought it was really good, and then you know, it wasn't getting any traction, and I went and looked, and they you know they got all kinds of weird. Right, weird political stuff. Right. I'm just like, I mean, you know, I, I don't even consider that. I'm just looking at like the right. art, but it sucks. Yeah, this is beautiful. So, like, look at this little bit of red. I don't know if if you can't see the file good, I can download this and then pop it into Photoshop mm -hmm. so we can zoom in on anything. But he, uh, he or she, Thomas, he he painted a little bit of red on this um like wood pole right here. It's really beautiful. I don't know how subtle it is um for you. That's weird, though. I mean, I, it's a great contrast uh, from the greenish, bluish kind of clouds. Yeah. But where would that red be coming from? <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a look. He's got a little bit of it peppered um, under here, too. And these stained glass windows. Let me see if I download this. If it's uh, oh, it's going to kick it in a folder. All right. Hmm. Oh, oh, shit. Did it? Oh, okay. But the, a... uh, that kind of greenish with the orange. Uh, always a nice. I love color combos. Yeah, um, yeah. This is a nice piece. I like it. Like, there you purple, go. Purple, purple, green, oranges. I'm pretty sure those are on a. Uh, I, I kind of consult the color theory, uh, just to kind of make sure I'm on the right track. But I don't know. I don't. I'm convinced you don't have to be obsessive about it. Okay, so we're gonna go to Thomas's and we'll see what Thomas likes. <laughs> You pick this uh, stuff. A lot of cartoony stuff. Interesting. Interesting. I can zoom um, down. A lot of painted stuff. Let me see. Um, let's go down a little bit further. Let's let's okay. go. Sure. Let's go deeper into their likes, yeah, not just yeah, their, yeah. their recent likes. Um, Deep um, I, my eyes kind of go into that guy on the horse. This looks like just a pencil drawing. This right here. But, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Man. Oh, oh man, that's nice. nice. Wow. Okay. Follow and then like because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, cool. good. Uh, this is you think this is digital? Uh, yeah, it looks like digital, like digital uh, sketch to me. Go, let's see the detail. What's the sure, detail sure. they got? Oh, nice, man. Wow, great face. It really is. I love the. I see people doing this and I want to try to do this where they'll establish the mustache and beard, but have hard highlights so that really all you're seeing is the shadow uh, underneath and it, they leave that part negative. Uh, yeah. I really like that look. Look at that. That's great. Yeah. It's, in it's really interesting. Like um, I'm always blown away. Like, like, uh, I've, I've said this in other videos. I'm always so impressed by by the ability of people to draw. The anatomy on the horse is a little bit off, but it's okay. But but um, like this, he's a he's a really really solid artist. So he's an Iranian concept artist at Machine Games. That is badass, man. Mm. It's really yeah, cool. stuff. yeah. The lines give you a good good movement. You can yeah. almost see all the different pieces, kind of like. Yeah, it's really, really good. This is nice, man. Okay, so let's go into Faraz, his gallery real quick. See if anything catches your eye if you want to look at another piece of his. Some nice uh, stuff. Some good uh, 
uh, it's always funny when you see them liking their own piece. Uh, yeah, I, see that. I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't either. I feel really weird about that. I don't even like my own videos on YouTube. Like, eh. I used to like my own videos on YouTube way back just because it's like you would get so few likes to just do anything to try to help it, but I don't anymore. I, li I like these because it's not my channel. <laughs> well, it's kind of, it's kind of Phil Hale-ish. Look at this. Ooh, I'm a sucker for Phil Hill. Oh, yeah. Right. Look at that splashy of kind of gold yellow back yeah. there. Yeah, he's good. I'm actually super stoked that I followed this dude. This like, looks like... Uh, uh, is it Anthony you were showing earlier? I was doing yeah. the gray scale. Yeah. This yeah. looks like it was started with gray scale and then colorized. Um, yeah. I'm seeing that that's actually a very good way to do things is to establish your values. Right. And then it's really easy. You drop in a bass tone and then throw on some highlights, you know? Is uh, there... Is there a challenge coloring over grayscale? Because I know I've definitely seen videos of people sort of addressing um, the making it not look like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's so many ways you could do it. Um, I mean, you could do your grayscale and then drop a, a multiply layer with your flat tones of color, you know, your base flats, like you always do in, in comics even. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could actually do... a um, there's so many different ways you could do it. You could do a, um, uh, uh, what's called a clipping mask over the gray tones and actually color the colorize your grays and blacks. And uh, you can also do, uh, man, I, I, there's so many ways to do it. It's not an issue. I mean, you could just dig in and find which way is more comfortable for you. This is great. Like this, this is beautiful. See, and 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 it, it's funny because. Um, there was a bit of concern from one of my YouTube friends, um, Farben, I believe. And he was like, you know, you're so obsessed with like nineties comic book art and like all your references are to like nineties comic art. And, and I said, I said, look, I go, <laughs> if you watch my colorist search video, I ta I say over and over again, I'm not looking to do traditional comic. I want a comic that looks like this, but is hand drawn, uh, like not digitally painted. This mm -hmm. is the look I'm going for. This is the atmosphere, you know, I, I thought I was pretty clear about it, but uh, this is just gorgeous, man. It's sometimes it's hard, you know. Um, I feel like I can, you know, I can kind of go in and and block out stuff that's drawn because you, you've kind of given your permission. Here's you know, you're saying that this is what you want, so it's a little different when you're dealing with somebody who's like, I, I want this look, and then you try to do that, and it's not working. So it looks like he might have done a spawn cover, unless this is just a mock-up. I, I haven't seen that, so <laughs> of course I don't check out spawn quite as much as I used to. But <laughs> right, and it's funny because this actually has a little bit more of a, a Jason Sean Alexander kind of vibe. Yeah. I actually like the bullets on a, the the waist are very cool. Yeah, oh. I, uh, Jason. Sean Alexander, I really like that stuff. Yeah. Uh, what is it with uh, the three names ending in Alexander? They're really good. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. I know. Okay, so let's go into his likes, and I'll let you pick. Oh, okay. I feel like we're playing Go Fish. <laughs> yeah. All right. No uh, no black and white, Go Fish. Uh, the first third, the number third one there, which looks like the girl in the socks. Yeah, you want to see that? This one right here? Yeah, let's just go. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Oh. See what I mean? I always end up going for the very clean, cartoony right. one. I guess because the colors are so... Right. Uh, uh, not dynamic. What am I thinking of? Just clear? Like, they catch my eye. You know, the pops, the huge pops of color. I, I um, like that this piece looks accessible. Like, if you were someone learning to draw you could look at something like this and try to attempt it and it you know would be challenging but but uh well, this looks like it's straight clean line art and all the stuff yeah see all the shadows are established in color it's very uh, that cool. takes a little more time to do for colorists um you know uh so like if you're gonna work with another colorist and you want to draw like this i would i would scribble in your own shadow work you know. Right. Look at this. This is funny. It's going to come up for you in a second, I think. Yeah, that's wacky. Big legs. Yeah. I'm sure I like the design. Uh, um, 
Dave Dave Johnson went through like a phase of like these big legged women uh, <laughs> and little tiny ankles. I'm like, I'm not sure I like the design yeah. of that. I don't okay. know. It works. Oh, yeah, go. For oh, it. Their their gallery is actually wow. very cool looking. I'm gonna follow. Very I wasn't bright. sure based on that piece, but this looks pretty neat. Yeah, uh, very very bright. Good colors. Let's look at this. This looks fun. It's a nice little piece. Uh, Andrew Tess says, haven't read Spawn since Greg left, and Oliver Von Ark says Capullo was great. That's true. That's I pretty much kind of dipped out when uh, he left. I'm a big oh, fan. Of, Love that. I'm a big fan of this kind of stuff and like 8-bit and 32-bit like GIFs, like animated GIFs that they do that look like this. Well, I love the little settings. You know, the, they just create this little stage, uh, you know. It's awesome. Uh, you want to you want you want to go through that world. That's the whole thing. When I see this, I go, I want to I want to walk down this alley and see is this a dead end? I want to go up these stairs and go inside this little room and see what this is all about. I can almost smell food cooking, you know. Uh, Oliver von Ark says this is ugly in my opinion, but hey, tastes differ greatly. Well, that's the whole the kind of point uh, for me when looking at this stuff is to even look at the stuff that I'm not. You know, maybe there's one piece in there or some design element or something that you can like, oh, I like that. Uh, I like this part of it. I'm going to take that and, you know, do something else with it. Or, you know, it's not for me. Move on. You know, this that's right. definitely, uh, you know, I, I, like this, for instance. I like how they did that. They were doing it on paper. Um, yeah. I wouldn't well, have thought that. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have thought that, but I like that brushy ink work. I actually like the inks a little more. Um, yeah. It looks like he might not have been fully done. Let me see when I go yeah. up. Oh, he actually removed the black. How funny is that? That's interesting. That's funny. Yeah, That's he took hard. It out. <laughs> yeah. He had to go with the lasso tool and separate it all. Okay, so let's go to Amin's likes and see what he likes. He only has 141. He's judicious with his likes. I respect mm. that. Mm. He's discerning taste. Oh, this is Zen, Zen Chin. He's awesome. I would have thousands of likes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even have a. Uh, Here, let's look of... at let's look at Zen stuff really quick. All right, you know this person's Ooh. art. Yeah, maybe we'll have to go look at their gallery. But I, you I would, love. You would recognize it just by the palette. Almost, he has a very very distinct palette and way that he colors things. Well, I like I like the rendering technique, which I'm seeing more and more is almost like a um, pastel chalk right. kind of yeah. rendering. You know, what what would that be? Just in Photoshop that you're using a certain level of opacity with it, or do you think he actually does it in like? Um, no, I think you're just being very controlled over how your darks and lights. Uh, there's no. <laughs> it looks like a lot of ambient light. Um, and then you got this huge top-down light, but there's no, there's no fill light, there's no edge lighting, there's no secondary light source. It's like lit entirely from one light from above, and right. and then you got your bounce light. Uh, but it creates this kind of like um, very flat uh, quality to it. Yeah, it, I I almost think it's probably more difficult to control your values in this kind of lighting. But so here's the underdrawing. And then you'll yeah. see the, the final. This guy's so good. This is something so, else I've seen permeate a lot of color is using white uh, as like your ultimate value. And I see that a lot. Like, and you look at like uh, a lot of Marvel comics, they'll just have this white light, boom, hitting them. Right. From, and it's like, uh, it just, it's a little easy. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I mean, I like it. I like the look of it. But it's like when you see it all the time, it's like, where is that giant white light coming from all the time? Right. Well, do you think, <laughs> you think it's, it's um, uh, an effect of using a light rig in a 3D program? Uh, maybe. But I, I think a lot of it just comes from what Hollywood is doing in their blockbusters, oh. you know, and you see certain lighting setups and people mimic that, you know, um, which ain't bad because there's some really badass cinematographers right now so. look at this piece this thing is so badass it's just weird i guess my that is fantastic but that's what i'm talking about that flat lighting that looks like early morning fog no direct light there's no right. i mean it's 
it's really hard to control your, you know, what to look at in this. It's very impressive. He, I've, I've follow him on Instagram. Uh, he actually does draw this stuff. These aren't 3d models as far as I know. Um, yeah, yeah. Got some serious, serious skills. Um, he's a big fan of Tarada. Um, yeah. I remember him saying that. I love Tarada. It was good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, uh, I'd love to do more stuff like this, but you know, it just depends on the scene. This is one of the things with working in comics. It's like you don't get to just arbitrarily do color however you want. It, right. it all depends on on the mood and stuff set by the story. Um, okay. So it'd be, it'd be it'd be great to do this in something, but it all <laughs> it all depends. So he's got 129 likes. I'll let you uh, pick. Some. Well, my he like goes. He's got a few of his own pieces liked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is that? I, <laughs> Especially just maybe, here. maybe just to make sure people going into the likes will see your stuff too. Right. I guess oh, maybe. No, this looks cool. I'm just gonna take a peek at this. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! I love stuff like this. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks very 3D. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just at like, least the buildings. Oh, look at this. Hey, hang on. I'll be right back. Be yeah, right no back. worries. Yeah, no, I get I get that this is a very different aesthetic than comics. I just think it's still fun. My my passion for video games and seeing things like this always um, make this stuff kind of fun to peek at. But you know, it's like you don't have to pin your your flag on on everything about it. Like Kelsey was saying, as many times, maybe it's just the design of the gun or the way that the metal looks or whatever it is. You don't, you know, it it's. You try to find something that maybe would be useful for you in in the work. That's interesting, but okay, so let's go back. Uh, I'm seeing I'm lots of boobs. Okay, <laughs> a little innocent, but I love yeah. the the colors the were so bright. I was curious to see. Yeah. This looks just, like it. There's a a, a rushing. Ukrainian, I'm not really sure. I just think they're from that part of the world that mm. does a style like this. I don't think this is them, but yeah. they they've been they draw like bloopy uh kind of girls. Um, right. In a, they have like those bloopy baby legs. doll girls or something. Yeah, they have the big thick legs too. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? He's really considerate of that same top down lighting, you know, and he hits all the hits all the various levels and then he has like a bounce light it seems like all he does is study light on these bloopy, <laughs> bloopy girls but it's fascinating I started, I started following this artist the other night it's funny i remember seeing this piece this is very very cool yeah, that's actually where my eye was going it's funny you should go <laughs> yeah yeah iraq note really really good artist this stuff I is love the, cool. the the design is is really interesting because there's like an old helmet uh armor yeah uh, armored helmet but it has yeah, a let's, very... go, let's go into this one stuff okay. uh, who yeah. is this Eric... iraq iraq a smithy, smithy. But he goes by iraq note he does a it's lot like... of like it's, it's like a lot of like kid things but there's just some nice pieces um like this wait, which one was it it was pretty sure guy... Oh, sorry. His gallery is quite small, actually. You think they're using actual photos and then paint over? Yeah, probably. Probably. Let well, I don't see. know. If they're Chinese, I know some Chinese artists that are extremely good at right. at drawing exactly what you're seeing. Yeah. Uh, I worked with a guy uh, on Jimmy Neutron. He did background paintings and stuff. And I would go into the office and he'd be like, Work. He should look. What do you think of this? And I, I was like, well, it's a nice photo. And he's like, no, no, no. I just painted that. <laughs> it's like a whole yeah. street scene at night, and it looks photo real. So there's, uh, who knows? Yeah, I'm trying to think of the person's name. The um, they're doing a comic book, and they paint almost like this. It's really good. Yeah, it's nuts. This uh, person. I love the gray. So you could tell the the fill lighting on the inside of the face there, where you could see the gray highlight. Yeah, uh, that that's reflecting the ambient light of the environment, and then she's got this little bit of high, like a, there's a light coming in from off camera, 
hitting right. on the side of the face. I love that kind of stuff where you're just letting the ambient light yeah. do most of the heavy lifting. Edge lighting, man. That's also like a little secret to comics, man. If, it, if all else fails, edge light. I mean, look oh, right, right here. A little bit of edge light. Boom. So you got the fill light with the grays. A little warm edge light. You're out. Done and out. That's <laughs> yeah, crazy. All right. So let's see what this person likes. What do you like? That likes his own stuff. Why is that? <laughs> oh, that's like an art station thing. Be sure to like a certain percentage of your own work. <laughs> this reminds me a little of Celia Kaye. Oh, I love this style where it's still hard light, but still painted. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Sun Man. Okay, so let's see what Sun Man's up to. This is really oh, like, wow. comp like super complicated traditional animation. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's got a little bit of like a, I mean, it doesn't look like Cowboy Bebop, but it reminds me, wow, that's great. Good design. What do you think the story is behind this character? I mean, he's very robotic, but he's got, is he a priest? Yeah, it's weird. He's got all these like crosses hanging on him. So yeah, maybe. He's got a cigarette. He's holding a cigarette. <laughs> he's a bad priest. <laughs> right. What's going on with this dude? Yeah, he's got chains. Yeah, he's a cool, cool priest guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, like he's like the bad boy cleric. He's chaotic good. <laughs> I like the uh, oh, the sand. They still cool. got that top down lighting. Oh, I see. They're playing with different stuff. That's just that. Look at this guy. He's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got cool. huge fingers. Little tiny legs. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what Sun likes. Sun, where are you taking us now? Oh, oh wow. All kinds of cool stuff. Alex Garner face there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to look at some Garner for a second? Yeah, we can. Okay. I'm curious what he's liking. Now, oh, Alex okay. Garner, if anybody doesn't know, uh, was the anchor of Gen 13 over uh, Jason Scott Campbell or Jeff Scott Campbell. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he moved in. He was always an artist. I actually like uh, colored a couple uh, trading cards that he did when he was still doing his like comic book style. So uh, yeah. anytime he gets cocky, I'll pull those things out. Hey, right. look. <laughs> Check this. Yeah, Garner. I you know what's interesting is so I was I said to you that Alex is very very meticulous and very much a perfectionist with his work. I know that he is a big Alex Ross fan. Um, but, uh, he came up with this very, almost like animated realism that he uses in his pieces. And he has a very distinct sort of, I don't know if you call it render or finished look to it. It's very slick, but very digital. I tend to like the ones where he goes a little more rough. Uh, there's times where I don't know if it's, um, like the, the, I'm not seeing him here, but he did this series of Batgirl covers that I thought were great. Um, yeah, oh, right. here's one. Is this is this more recent? Uh, that looks like more recent, but you can kind of see his older stuff. It looked like he was putting more into the the character in the environment. Maybe I don't know. Um, but this is really fun, actually. This She's got nice. killer abs, though. My God. Yeah, that, that, that's a little rough for me. <laughs> Those abs look like guy abs. Right, it's crazy. Like the fabric on the outfit and the boots too are really, really nicely done. And He's so his, controlled, though. I, I'm a, I love his stuff actually. Um, um, but you know, look at that. I mean, that's really great. Yeah, it's crazy. But I asked him one time, "Are you using photos?" And he said, "I'm just referencing my own face and how lighting goes on it." But that was a long time ago, so I don't right. Know what do you know? He probably He's, just uses whatever works. You know, like most people. Yeah, I mean, you figure for textures and stuff like that, why wouldn't you use like the stuff that's out there? Like, if you need a metallic texture, you know, you could you could source that from like three D code or a program like this. this. Is really cool. But I'm always impressed with with artists like him and like Alex Ross that can do color so that it looks like. See, this looks like the guy's colors lit by a light. Uh, I always end up changing the color because, like, I'm I'm all about like if it's red light, you know, the ambience of that red light will change every color in there. Wow. And I don't I don't know how some of these guys manage to do lighting accurately. And that's that might be what I'm drawn to Alex's stuff because it looks like the thing standing there lit by a light, 
you know it's really well done right that's a huge compliment from you too okay so let's see what alex likes 28 alex is very very <laughs> judicious with his like he's, he's a a busy smile. he's probably busy working a lot <laughs> maybe i hope not smashing the like button all right you pick my friend oh me um man out of all of these the the first one's kind of getting my that's what i, I was gonna pick yeah. that. It looks great it looks amazing the oh, good man, design follow ah, i love the simple yeah the the fast painting i don't know if that's what this is but it kind of has that speed painting kind of quality I'm trying to think there was a game that i just played and I, now i'm not going to remember the name of it um it's like this character that runs around in the desert someone will know what i'm talking about that really weird game with the flags that blow in the wind and you run around in the desert um it has a little bit of that vibe not her but just the the color and that this, it kind of reminds me of um uh alex nino's work on on um mulan Oh, okay. You ever see the, uh, I have am the I thinking on. of the right guy? Nino, Alex Nino. He did these like um, charcoal renderings that had a lot right. of design like this. I have the Art of Milan book, book right over there, actually. It was funny. It was one of the few yes. <laughs> it was one of the few Disney Art of books that I had never picked up, and I bought it probably about a year back just to finally have it. Those it's were good. so good for like a hot minute, man. They were like every every movie had these killer art books came with it. This artist is badass. This stuff is great. This is oh, yeah. really cool. Look at this little drawing here. High design. Look at that. It's, it's great when you can see the still painted, but has a high design to it. You know. Yeah. Really great. That depth of field is very good. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so I don't. Fun. I don't mind the blur when it's as effective as this. This looks like a real, like they spent a lot of time making it very accurate. The lighting, the time of day that the light is creating is so, it's so pretty. Oh, yeah. yeah, good stuff. Let's look at one more from this artist. I like it. I'll I don't know up. if this is inspiring me or making me just want to give up for the day. <laughs> well, it, I, it can definitely create like an identity crisis. This looks actually pretty badass. Oh, this yeah, is I'm nice. trying. Oh, that's so cool. It really has a three-dimensional quality to it. Yeah, it's really that good. edge lighting. Look at that edge lighting. Ta -da. Yeah. <laughs> I love the the sneakers. Oh man, it's so cool. This is really really creative, nice looking stuff. And look at the black and white. It actually looks very very cool. That's something I'm I've been more considerate of lately is doing clothing that you, people can identify. Uh, right. Not it's such a, a small thing, but like I I found that like especially sneakers. People like dial into what shoes your characters have. It's really weird. Yeah, <laughs> was, uh, it makes this, me want to try harder and do and make sure I don't do two two left feet. <laughs> yeah, well, 50 fifty percent of this design is like if you go on Tumblr and look up dystopian like cyberpunk, yeah. like everybody's wearing these pants and shoes and the like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he did a really nice. So this is really cool too. I actually mm. like the, the gradient on it. Yeah, just a base value, you know, so you kind of know where the light's coming from. This is my favorite stuff that I've seen so far. Let's go into theirs. Let's take a look at their gallery. Oh, I like, we're looking at the gallery. I like a lot of the stuff that I've seen, but this this actually is like I'm I'm going like I would like to go back and flip through this guy's gallery tonight more. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, uh when I, shoe when shoe shoe. Yeah, wow. So how do you say the X I would, I would call it when Xu Xu. No, I don't know. Zoo. It's, it's probably Zoo. You're right. Winzu Winzu yeah. Winzu Zoo. He's great. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and pick. I know it's hard because the thumbnails aren't very big for you. So do your best. It's all right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take I a like, peek at this. You're peeking really quick. I like the white girl in the white outfit. But which one are you looking at? Oh, the, it's a big. It's Oh, this is I've this is from a game or something, I think. Which one? Uh uh it's gonna come up on the screen in a second. I think you got a little bit of lag. Do you see a, a guy standing in front of a big statue? I'm still looking at the gallery. 
Oh, it, it's it, the stream must be a tiny bit behind me or something because I'm actually on an image. We'll see if it goes. Um, oh, it's weird. Oh, maybe because I open a window. Oh, it, may open a new window. Oh, yeah, in another tab. That's why. Yeah. Here, <laughs> that. I didn't uh, realize. Ooh, his feet are great. Yeah, talk Dude. about gnarly feet, man. <laughs> So this is Thomas Chamberlain Keen. I don't know. The name sounds slightly familiar, but that's let's really check out. Let's check out his stuff. Let's we'll see what he's got. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go down the rabbit hole. Sure. I love the slats, the slats of the wood, how they each look like a different plane, look at you know, slightly mm. moved. That's a crazy design. Ooh, weird. Good color, though. Yeah. Look at the hair. I'm not sure the hair would work like that, but... <laughs> oh, so it's a girl's face looking down. I didn't even see that. Yeah. It's so close on the skull. The skull hat. Man, she's creepy. There's a tight of it. Oh, he's got a little YouTube video. That's what's great about this, too, is that you can go and actually yeah. sometimes... Let's see what this is. I'll speed it up a little bit. Yeah, I've seen... I've watched a lot of these where they show you kind of progress... Oh, it's even them designing it, like trying to figure out the skull. Yeah. Oh man, that skull's great. <laughs> I like that design actually. With the <laughs> yeah. So do fast. You do, do you do a lot of this? Where you? I do. I do it on paper, though. I prefer paper. Yeah, I, I got stacks awesome. and stacks of, of yeah. paper with this the kind of stuff on. <laughs> wow. wow, and then he dials it in. He's like, yeah, I like yeah. this. It's just he such just, a shame that he doesn't end up with an original, you know? Right. We better just hope his power doesn't go out. It's right. <laughs> I like he's flipping it back and forth. I do like doing uh this kind of work digitally so that i can quickly uh resize right. proportions i got a real issue with proportions um oh and uh it's really helpful to be able to like you know why is and then i'll look i'll just look at it and i'm like god that hand is enormous you know let me just grab the hand and shrink the hand so instead of having to redraw the whole thing or erase and redraw i you know i'm like that hand looks good it's just too big the you stuff can just grab it mm -hmm. I said, uh, seeing these videos and stuff like that really does come in handy. Help us. So that's very, very cool. Andrew Tess says bleach fan art. Is that what this is? Is this from bleach? Is it bleach? I think they were making it up, but it does kind of have a bleach feel to it with that skull. So he calls her dead slug. <laughs> that's not very nice. I know. <laughs> Okay. Uh, look at that mouth. The uh, that's like a somebody in the standing yep. in a weird purple bluish mouth. No, no, no. Uh, right, almost in the center. It looks uh, like a birthday cake eating okay. a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. <laughs> I like the. From far away, it looks like oh, crazy. So interesting. So this actually has a little bit of a nod to the the Zen Chin art. This is very Zen uh, Chin right here very cutesy yeah it's nice it still looks like a birthday cake uh yeah is that like cool. a cutaway is that a cutaway where inside of that thing is like a little house yeah it looks like it of some sort <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> i love the concept of that i always yeah. love that kind of stuff where you can go inside of something like a house moving castle you know it's like moving around but it's like this yeah. whole yeah, oh look fun. at that Oh, see, and there's a little door on its stomach. Oh. Yeah. Cool. I don't yeah, know what you do with that. You know, make a print out of it, maybe. Okay, so let's see what he likes. All right, Rich, what do you got? What's drawing uh, your eyes? I'll pick something different. Let's see. I'll try to find something that looks somewhat traditional. Oh man, I get drawn in by the colors. I'm such a sucker for color. It's like I'm like, yeah. oh, pretty. Good. 
it. Let's see what this. I want to see what this is. This looks like it might be. Um, no, it's I, I was thing. looking at that too. <laughs> Were you really? It's. I'm telling you, you and I have a very weird connection in um, like aesthetic that we like. It's funny that it's very similar. Well, we're kind of drawn to like ambient light, I think. Uh, is that what it is? Maybe because this blue, I like this weird green they got going on here. It doesn't really make any sense, but it right. it works so well with that green with the blue. Just just think if we would have never met, <laughs> <laughs> we'd still is, be like how looking how at hmm? right? Well, it's, it's so funny. I mean, we, how many fuck? How many images were we freaking looking at that we both do, keyed in on that? There's like so many. It's it's out of all of this. That's the one that stands out to me. I know, uh, and that's an important takeaway for artists to realize that. Well, I, I've noticed that some of those, like if you go back to like the overall group, yeah, uh, there's you know a lot of gray. A lot, not, I say gray. I just mean like um, mid tone, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of pop. And my eye goes right to the yeah. Like there's. The, the cat, uh, yeah, the stuff with the most contrast uh, is the stuff that gets my attention. Um, yeah, I like this winged one standing in front of the clouds. But I'll, I'll open that in a sec. Let me just follow this artist. Yeah, okay. let's just go down this path. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you want to? Okay, we can. No, so no, no. Is... Let's just go down. Let's go down this one because this got our attention. So let's see what okay, they got. So this is Ava Escalinen, and she's mm. real good. Oh man, you know it's she's got a little bit of a um Erwindel, Evelyn Erwindel look. I can never say the mm. name. Look at this. Her, very much likes green, green and blue combo. Wait, did I open it in another window? Oh, let me no, see. no, no. I can see this. Okay. I was I was scared. I had to look at that. You see that one? I like the the graphic quality of the trees. I'm always like wanting to do my trees just straight color, but I always right. feel like. Uh, you know, it looks like I'm cheating somehow. <laughs> okay, let's go back. I'll let you pick one. You can pick it from the colors or thumbnail or whatever. Let's yeah, a lot see. of green. Hmm. How did this see? I'm, I, I, hmm. Uh, my eyes going to this one with the cat on a tree branch. Oh, this right here? Right here? Um, no. Yeah, uh, up, yeah that one. Yeah, yeah. I like the texture brush yeah. that they. Yeah, I like the uh, that tree is great. It's so simple. It looks like just a couple colors and then the that texture. The cat's face is funny. It's I like it. It's a little. It's a little weird and it, just on its own, it maybe doesn't hold up, but it seems to work with the piece. I thought it was going to be like a jungle girl on on the cat's back. Uh, this looks like some really trees. Cool. <laughs> Nice little little piece, a oh, similar right. color palette to the one that we just looked at. Oh, this is Stranger Things. Um, this is that ambient lighting. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to pull off, but this looks great. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, so let's see what Ava's into. Ava, your gallery was very fun to look at. Thank you for your efforts. Okay, lots of green. Lots <laughs> yeah, this she likes green blue a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a sneaky peek at this. This looks pretty epic. It's gonna be like oh, oh man. Wow. That looks like it started as a photograph, but probably yeah, changed it, dramatically. And it's so epic looking. <laughs> this looks like he's stand at first I thought it was a sh guy with short legs, but I think he's standing in a bog or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's like a, like what, like you said, it's like a bog. He's up to about his knees. Yeah, man, looks right out. Yeah, of like I'm the really impressed by pieces like that because of the, you know, like this. ambient light. There's no contrast, so this it's really bad. hard to like balance your piece. I mean, look how the contrast in this with that direct sunlight low on the horizon. You yeah. can easily hit your subjects in shadow or hit with light. You know, it's really easy. But the ambient light, just alone, it's like uh, almost no contrast. It's like uh, it's so much harder to balance your piece. Yeah. This is beautiful. Great it really is beautiful. This is Hugo Puzuli. 
So this let's is making it. me want donuts. Right. <laughs> Hugo, Hugo said, oh, man, got a little topi going on. Oh, yeah. Little topi. Anything that's oh, kept... I've seen this guy. Yeah, I got this guy favorited. Um, okay. Yeah, because of, probably because of the topi kind of graphic quality. Look at this. Um, you, this is called Ukrainian Forest. Yeah. And I, I'm a sucker for hard color where they you know, they create all the shapes with very little blending. It's just created with like, you know, slightly slight variations of, right. of flat color, you know, when they go in. This looks like they might have some grads and stuff, but yeah, it's not really, a lot. Let's see. Wow. Oh, this looks a little Mobius-ish. Uh, not so much when you zoom in on it. <laughs> It is the line art, the clean line kind of style. Yeah. But you know, I I oh, these colors that... won't print though. <laughs> oh, they would print. He's using a lot of illegal colors. I noticed a lot of guy digital artists right. online are like, "Look at these colors I can use." I'm like, "That'll never print." <laughs> you can spot it when you see it. You can tell. Is it a level of saturation that it has? Yeah, and also if you if you go over a certain level of saturation. The inks start acting real funny on the paper because it's okay. too too much ink, you know. So oh. you'll end up with a dark. It depends on the paper. If it's like a porous paper, the ink will be darker, so your colors mm. will go darker. If it's like a, a coated paper, the ink kind of floats on top of the paper, so it ends up looking closer to what your what's on your screen. Um, there's all kinds of things to think about. Okay, so let's color. see. He's got a lot of likes. He's generous with his likes. Yeah. Uh, let's let's see if we're spotting the same stuff. Nothing's. Ooh, I see nothing's something that looks kind of cool. You you tell me when you. Uh... I was curious to see this really fast. These look like character designs. Face? But... Which one? Oh yeah. yeah. Really oh, I cool. love that quick brushy kind of look this guy is good so this is liang mark i'm gonna follow you liang and i'm gonna like your piece oh these are cool i almost wish game art wasn't such a thing so that you could do a comic like this and not you know oh you're just doing it just being kind of blending into the right like if it, it's just this stuff took off so hard man uh, for a while game art. Looks like he had a candle head. Oh, I like that guy. Oh, I'll go back down in a sec. Sorry. Well, he does yeah. have a candle on his head. <laughs> oh, is it a camel? I was like, oh, is it a camel? I didn't notice. No, no, no. A candle, like a, <laughs> like Lumiere. Like this. Woo, that's cool. Yeah, that's great. Man, this this artist is really, really good. Oh, man, look at that. So uh, mm. do you, you know Dave Raposa's work? Oh, again, maybe. I, I lose names, but I know artwork. <laughs> he has a book that he's been working on. He's another concept artist that has a, a comic in him. I think it's called Moon and Crow. Oh, it's beautiful art. Oh, my gosh. Let me uh, actually let me pull it up because he's got it in here. We'll, we'll um, let me search really quick. Uh, artists. It's weird. Um, I, just, you know, artists like this, you know, the only. I guess they're popular online and they can do art books, but it's like, it's, uh, it's rough when you're like, you're, I mean, there's no purpose to this stuff unless you, in a corporate setting with millions of dollars and, you know, creating a, you know, with lots of other artists all kind of working together to create something. I mean, um, um how many art books oh, can you possibly own? James Zapata. Sorry, I said Dave Zapata. Let me uh, go into this guy's gallery. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's badass. It's really, really cool. I actually had this as my desktop for a long time. So he created these two characters called Moon and Crow, and he does these beautiful pieces with this gigantic crow that hangs out with this like little like elf. Oh, thing. yeah. Okay, I've seen this guy's stuff way early on. He was yeah, doing... This has been around online for a long time. Look at this piece right here. It's beautiful. Uh, I wish it would download bigger. Uh, yeah, these are all newer than what I've seen. He, 
it looks like he's doing more. He did more rougher stuff early on, at least. I thought. Um, the atmosphere on this, this is this is very like like um, got me excited about doing Blaster Kids stuff like this. Just, Again, like do a story for crying out loud. I mean, tell me what this moon and crow. Just a bunch of pictures of a moon and a crow. You know, it's like. Well, that, like well, and that was the idea is that this was going to be some sort of a storybook, but as you know, it's very very difficult to get artists to be organized enough to to be able to to follow through with it it's not so much about doing the pieces it's like how do you get a book printed how do you take it to a convention to sell it are you going to bring 500 copies of a hardcover book to a show how do you pay for it up front back back when this guy was coming up with this stuff crowdfunding books wasn't such a big thing you know yeah um oliver van arks uh says still a huge fan of casper david friedrich oh yeah uh, yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure I know the name. Uh, Andrew Tazo once says, uh, Raposa was one of the few concept artists who tried to make a comic and actually got over the hurdle. A lot of these guys have no clue how much work a comic is. That's so true. That's a lot. Pieces. I, I, I mean, if you were to do a comic like this, it would take you a couple of years. I mean, you, you think it would? Yeah. Um, I, I've worked on several projects that, you know, having to do all the art and oh. on a on a lot of pages, it just takes a lot of time. You know? Yeah, isn't that cool looking? Uh, that's really great. I mean, I <laughs> I don't want an art book of this. I want to see this like moving. I want to see a, a a story or a movie. I totally agree. I was funny as I was talking, art books. <laughs> I was talking to James Smith, my good friend that I always mention in all the videos. James, I hope you're doing well. James has had two strokes in the last year and a half, mm. and he's recovering. And he's a real good guy and a real good artist. But um, I was saying that, you know, I want to draw comic books. And the reason that I have to strip down my style and come up with something where I can do 130, 160 pages a year, I want, I love detail, but I also want to be able to tell stories. And it's a mm -hmm. real delicate balance that you have to create to Man, get. I was eyeballing this one. <laughs> the, the red, red one. is so intense. Yeah. yeah. This is a trick I've learned in coloring. Like when you're doing red, uh, let the absolute red be the uh, the highlight, and then go dark from there. Don't try to add highlights to red, oh. like going white, because uh, it looks weird. Unless it's like uh, glistening, but just let red be your ultimate high high point. I always hate when they're so they they post such small files. I wish that I mean it's like. Share a bigger file, man. Come if on, you, if you open it, in a, like right click and open it in a new tab, it should be bigger. Yeah, if I go into a new tab, though, it won't show up on right. the, uh, the stream. So, what if oh. you pop it out? There's a little button there next to it that looks like it'll pop it out into a new window. Oh, okay, let me see. See if, um, oh, this click oh, the little right. square. Uh, yeah, it it's got a little bigger, not much. Um, no, it didn't didn't work on our end. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, it didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it did. yeah. No worries. Oh, wow. uh, okay. So let's go to James's likes. James should have some pretty interesting. And I was funny. I didn't realize I didn't follow him here. Um, I've always saved images of his stuff. I would have assumed that I I was, but I keep all these guys' favorite. I don't, I'm not on the actual site, but I have like if I go in my favorites of my browser, I just got Art Station, Art Station. So. Here's a little, uh, what is this, John Singer Sargent reference. I love Sargent, man. I you see that? It. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. funny. This is, Thomas, this is Thomas Chamberlain Keene. We've actually circled back to one of the artists that we were looking at through a like. Isn't that funny? Hmm. That's how That's good he is. Life has come full circle on ArtStation already. And that happens quite a bit where you see guys that are like, they're they're constantly influencing each other, which I guess is the same as all of us in comics. Very, very Rembrandt, very Goya, very um, just. I oh, man. love that. God, that uh, that. What do you call uh, expressionism? I love oh, the. Yeah, the, I'll go back to that. Where you could accomplish so much with just one paint stroke. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this is this is definitely Sargent influence. Look, what where, where yeah. do you see the bottom one? It's funny. It's it's very much like one of his portraits. Sargent, but digital. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah it's nice. It's nice. Okay, so let's go back to Zapata's uh, likes. 
see what he's up to. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is sort of fancy. Looks something like something that you would do or like. Looks a little stuff. I, I, I love that. Your old graphic quality. And this is Sergei Kolosov. So Sergei is really, really good and was a very, very popular concept artist. But he's he's very um, mm. like uh, what would you call it? Uh, he's gone in a very different direction than what his original work was like. And I think it's it's confused some of his hardcore fans. But I've stuck with him, and man, he's he's incredible. That's a that's a thing that's. Uh we could talk about one day is like um you know having a distinctive style versus being able to change it up you know yeah. like pe people get used to like what you do you know awesome <clears throat> this stuff looks like stuff you'd see like when you read the magazine and they'll have an article on stan lee you know and they'll get an artist like this to do a portrait of stan in a very interesting way you know all these you know what i mean like it's spot illo for so let, articles. I'll show you what his early work looked like, and then I, I'll I'll let you see what his new stuff looks like, and you'll see how much he's he's changed. So so this stuff was like mind bending. Like at the time, nobody could touch this guy. It was so freaking good. Um, let me find like a particular piece that uh, will sell the sizzle. Uh, let's do a lot of colors that ain't gonna print in here. <laughs> oh yeah. He would just do the crazy stuff, man. It's oh, so God. weird looking. But it always had it always had um, a cartoony style to it. He would use beautiful color palettes, and it was it was like he was doing textures and stuff like that that you really weren't seeing at the time. It's hard it's hard to really appreciate sometimes stuff out of context of the time period. Mm. Let me see. Um, I'm trying to find. It's been so long since I've looked at his gallery. But this all it's, so it's, like, like, it's like frustrating because it's almost everything we look at is out of context. You know, it's just a random right. thing. And it's yeah. frustrating to me because I'm like, what is this? What what are we talking? What is this saying? I know, it's I, I'm like, frustrated with art that's just look at me. I'm an artist. You know, like I Give me something. Tell me a story with what even one piece. I'm like, what are you saying with this? I don't abstract art makes me angry. <laughs> yeah. right. You know, what is it? He worked on this video game and did some pretty neat designs for it. Let's see if I can find one. But his art now looks like like uh like this. Like it's like super minimalistic and just yeah. kind of weird. It's like weird shapes and and colors. I like that. It's um. There's an artist. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting. But there's a guy who's uh, known for this. Um, gosh, man, I can't remember his name. Uh, oh man, yeah, I'm I'm drawing a blank. But there's a oh. guy that sort of popularized this. Um, who's old school, real famous for doing these shapes. And there's like all this detail within the simple shapes. Uh, and it ends up having this photo, photo real quality, but with a design kind of. Yeah. Kind of oh, Ling. That was, that was his name, his, uh, whatever you want to call it. Like his username was Pei Ling. I was trying to remember what it was, but that's what he kind of became known as. But you know, this, the, like, this is such a, a drastic change from what he was doing early on that I, that I think that people kind of had a problem with it. It seemed to. I like He's, this stuff actually. He, I like the more graphic. Uh, again, it's just like, what is this? I know. <laughs> if the story, if like if this, if I saw a book drawn like this or an animation, that'd be really interesting. I think that's what maybe what a lot of these guys do, where they're like, you know, here's something I would like to do. Maybe somebody will see it and like be inspired by it, and then you know, yeah. do a work in that look. You know that's possible too. Um, oh, he was one of the first artists that I ever saw do this thing with the gigantic, like, like, um, where something's sticking out of the water, and but it's mm. like a huge figure. 
there, there wasn't a lot of those concept style pieces out at this point. So this was a this was a pretty big moment where you had, yeah, like the sense of scale that it had was like super disturbing. I mean, this is cool. Like, I, this would be a great print to like hang on your wall because it's like you can. It's one of those things where you can kind of just look at it, I guess, and let your mind wander. Um, ah, is, that's cool. Yeah, this is her name is Ala Chernova. So this is 3D. It's cute. It's neat. 3D adaptation concept. Uh, Andrew Tess says, Kelsey, I know you two aren't going to close the show without looking at some Jamie Jones. Who's Jamie Jones? Jamie Jones? The, you thinking, of, of, thinking of Jeffrey Jones? We were going to do Jeff, but um, yeah. we'll come back to that. I'm trying to see where the post is. It was Andrew Taz? Jamie Jones. Uh, I'll look I'll look up Jamie Jones to see if it's on here. Yeah. Or artists. Oliver Von Ark says Jackson Pollock, most overrated uh, quote unquote artist ever, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But that kind of stuff just it aggravates me. But you know, that's what's so interesting about art. It's subjective. Somebody sees that and sees their chaotic life or something. I don't know. You know, here's, like, oh, this is so mean. <laughs> So here's Jamie Jones. There's, there's not a lot of art. It looks like maybe they're a comic book artist or um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know the work. Mm. Independent art says Lazarus. Is this the person that you wanted, Andrew Taz? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Thomas Hart Benton, somebody, uh, Hans Rogers too. Uh, Let's, we'll go like 10 more minutes. Um, if anyone has an artist that they, they want us to pull up, let me know, and I'll, I'll look real quick. See that Spyro, uh, Spy, Spyro or whatever? I actually bought that game. You see oh, okay. there's like dragons. Yeah, I yeah, bought yeah. that game because they redid – like I don't really care about that game, but the design of the dragons was so fun. This looks uh, good. And they're really well done in the game too. They got a lot of – character and design oh yeah i could totally um, see it was a lot of fun uh there's there's a group of guys that do this kind of stuff monster yeah. monster i don't know creature creature tech i think some there's a company that does there's like a, probably a couple guys but yeah uh, i don't it's, know if this is them but uh really? they do stuff like this wow uh, yeah these kind, of, these kind of art books were always the hot shit yeah, this is probably, um, is you know, more wow. in my typical line of interest. <laughs> That's great. Look at this Beetlejuice. That's really good. <laughs> wow, it's so good. Man, the texture on the jacket, it might be a little difficult to see, but he used a little yeah. bit of a rubber brush on it, and it really mm. has a neat, like, um, like, wool sort of fabric to it. Damn. Oh, Andrew Tess says wrong one. I don't know if he's on our station. Oh, right. sorry. We'll have to look him. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I, I'd like to see uh, some 3D. This is why I like the. Um, who are the guys that do the the stop motion animation? Leica. Uh, okay. They take a lot of risks in their character design and their stuff, and uh, you know, it's not just the same old Disney face and giant eyeballs and like. A lot of this stuff I could see like it, like bringing to life, you know, this kind of stuff. This actually has a little bit of a cartoony feel, even though it's kind of got like a realistic, um, like a Rockwell feel. kind of real but caricatured. Yeah, the face is nice. Damn, I'm gonna follow this. this I, is... I would get bored of of drawing all the, you know, <laughs> rendering all that stuff. I, yeah. I love it. I love it, but I know that I would, I would hack a bunch of that out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I wanted to see oh this I follow this artist on um uh Instagram. I've turned so many people onto this guy. He's very, very prolific and man these things are they're great caricatures. Oliver Von Ark says anyone remember who draw who drew Slain? Slain was Beasley and like a couple other guys, but Beasley did the main one. And Man Bat was John Bolton. And John Bolton is fantastic, and he did a great uh, Army of Darkness 
mini series yeah. in the same painted style. Check it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I like the simplified painterly That's quality cool. of it. It's super cute. And there, those those chunky legs again. Yeah, it works on this. The proportions are better. I think need yeah. better boobs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like I the probably, simple quality of it. I I I always appreciate the art, but there is a weird thing where it's like, why do they all have to look like kids, like like naked kids? Like that's a little like a little creepy. But I I try not to overthink it and just go like. Oh, I whatever. just think they're char they're caricaturing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Real women. I, you can. I mean. You can kind of tell like when they're trying to do real people, but yeah, it's a little weird. Andrew Tess says Kelsey would probably dig Victor uh, uh, Kalvechev. Yeah, I think that guy's fantastic. Nate Rhodes asks Beasley. Simon Beasley is fantastic. Yeah, yeah I think you'll enjoy it. Check it out. And talk about gorillas. There you go. I know. It's like Keith Richards and uh, what's his character's name? I forget. Um, I can't think of his name. I, it's been a while. In the gorillas? Yeah, yeah that's so awesome with the black and white half and the color, dude. That looks so cool. Yeah, this is real. This is 3D. I don't. I need to do oh. some sculpting and stuff, but oh, you would crush it. It would look so good. I don't know, man. It's a. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to get your uh, mind around 3D. Uh, I'm, I'm good at making 2D look 3D. <laughs> we'll do one more artist, and then we'll call it. Uh, let's see, some Robocop, some Baloo the Bear. Let's see, let's go for something really like something that really pops. Okay. Um, when you is see anything it. grabbing you? Um, I'm seeing a couple things. I, was, I like the Calvin and Hobbes down below. What? Oh, I uh, where's Calvin? Let me see if I can spot it. It's a little further down. Uh, you kind of scrolled up. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let's I think I've There's seen this piece of mine. Oh, this is the same art. We went back. Oh. He actually his own piece and, and uh, <laughs> stuck with us in. This is great, though. I've seen this on his Instagram. It's really, really beautifully done. Great lighting. I would. I mean, I would kill to see like uh, an uh, an authorized Calvin and Hobbes animated film look like. You know, something like this would be great. Yeah, gosh, uh, that'll never happen. <laughs> yeah, he's a weird dude. Right, like he doesn't like it. He doesn't like any of it. Merch. No, nah, he said. He said uh, all he wanted to say in the comic strips, and that's he wants to keep it pure. Is uh, so they made a three D model of that. Yeah, it's interesting. So it's three D model, ZBrush and digital, and then he rendered it in Maya, and then I guess he painted over the. Um, God, uh, it sounds like such a lot of work. Why don't you just? I know. It to look, paint it to look like you did all that. <laughs> yeah, seventeen layers on this. Whoo. <laughs> Yeah, I end up with a lot of layers sometimes. But. Oh, he's great. So okay, so let's uh, we'll go back to our uh, chat and screen for a second. We can. Uh... So that was fun. It was different. It's it's like you know, not the strongest video that we've done because it's uh, it's random. You know, you have to kind of go with. The well, flower. sometimes, sometimes I go I'll go through the rabbit hole and like not. It would be like this, where it's like, well, there's some good stuff, and so, and then there's other times where it's like everything you look at is yeah. is like money, and you're like, yeah. this is where I want to go. I want to do this. Oh my god, look at this guy. I want to. Never mind that other guy. I want to do this guy. So the night that changed your life, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Vibe. Yeah, I mean, so definitely, uh, just dig through there because it's a never-ending, like, flow of of yeah. amazing ideas and technique. And it will at least get your juices flowing where you're like, what the hell am I going to do with this today? And, yeah. Well, you know. it's interesting. We both, we both have kind of expressed similar um, sentiments towards Art Station. Neither one of us has really gone there that much. Do you agree <laughs> with that? <laughs> I, I, that yeah, I get, I get a little bogged down, too, by it, you know, where it's just like, right. um, I can't go to some of these places that these guys go. So right. sometimes it gets to be a, a little, uh, you know, crappy for me. But it's like, but I, I guess what I need is just that, that energy to like, you know, right. pump up and not try to do what they're doing. Just be like, oh, this is making me want to do stuff. You know, they go, right. go like, for it. Yeah, inspiration. Did you feel like Deviant Art 
um, was you could connect with that more and that felt like more in your wheelhouse or did you do much deviant art? It was really the same kind of thing. I, I would do the, exactly the same kind of thing. Only the art, uh, wasn't at that high level. It's almost like art station is where like just the high end professionals seem to go. At least that's how the site curates itself because way. I agree. We know that there's other artists on there that probably aren't that high level, but it seems right. like which is kind of crappy for art station if you're an artist trying to get a leg up. It seems like all they're doing is propagating the super high end stuff. Right. Uh Deviant Art on the other hand you get much more of a cross section of uh, amateur versus pro. So even right. the amateur guys you're seeing, you're like, they'll, you know, you look through people's favorites and you'll see this guy who does this one amazing thing. It's the only thing they did like that, but it's yeah. everybody favorited it, you know, and it's yeah. a great way to, it's, I think it's much better for an up and comer to get right. attention. I think on, on deviant art. Uh, it's maybe art. Deviant art just seems like it completely died. And I know that's not exactly the case. There's still a uh, community there and there's definitely people that still regularly post there, but man, yeah. it just really just, boy, when the bottom fell out there, it really just kind of vanished. Instagram's real good too. Like uh, for just kind of, you know, I just scroll through the feed. It's a little bit different kind of exercise, but um, you see a lot of sketches and stuff on right. uh, Instagram, which is fun. And even Twitter, um, I, I went through a, down a rabbit hole of Twitter uh, with these uh, Japanese animators. And they right. would be posting their pencil art and stuff like that. And, man, I just went off on that last night. Yeah. Just great, great design work. I, I love looking at Japanese animators' actual pencil work because they – they're just really good at volume and design and uh, and uh, uh, proportions and things like that. So yeah, yeah, it's good to look at that stuff without color because then you can kind of see the base of it. You know, yeah, it's easy to get caught up in the color, and you almost think that there's not that there's way more, but there is way more too. You know, the 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 way they sculpt things or carve things out. You know, so yeah, seeing the line art is very helpful. Andrew Taz also says, yeah, you get a lot of other stuff on DeviantArt as well. You get photography. I, I look at a lot of, like, actual models and lighting from photography from DeviantArt. You get sketches. You get, uh, yeah, you get tons of uh, cosplay. You get just people just randomly posting their photography or, or yeah. doodles from napkins. I mean, you got everything on, on DeviantArt as well. I followed I felt a lot of photographers on on TV and art at different times, you know, yeah. and, and they would always kind of go like in the back of my mind, oh, well, that would be good for like female figure drawing or whatever it ended up being. But yeah, it was it was it was cool. I I enjoyed that part of it too, you know. Andrew Taz is on fire right now. Kelsey, look up Monben. Yeah, Monben is um, I forget the name of the artist, but he's the guy that did uh, 20th Century Boys and stuff. He's really mm -hmm. good. I like him. But he started doing this video series where he'll go to uh video other m mangaka uh, uh doing their thing old and oh, new and see their oh, techniques yeah. and interview them it's a and, and you could do the basic they just started the new season uh and they but it's not translated you have to do like the kind of auto translate right. on it but manben m a n b e n it's someone yeah good stuff but <laughs> someone wanted to see the shirt Black Sabbath, more pigs. <laughs> it's like, like, just I, I literally when I do laundry, I wash like thirty-five black shirts that are all like bands. That's all my lawn. That's all my clothes. <laughs> hey, who, who's your Sabbath uh, lead uh, lead singer? Who you uh, like? I, uh... you, well, <laughs> that's a tough question. I know. <laughs> um, wait, here's a funny thing, and I won't talk about it too long. Obviously, you've got to give Ozzy the the nod, but Dio was absolutely incredible in Sabbath, and the albums that he did with, with Sabbath are incredible. But you know what? Tony Martin, who I never, ever listened to, <laughs> the Tony Martin albums are actually very, very good, and that guy can sing his ass off. Tony Martin's legit. Um, That's interesting. Those, I don't know if I know the Tony Martin stuff. I don't have to dig Glenn, that up. Hughes, Glenn Hughes did an album. I love the Ian Gillen uh, born again. I mean, I'm I'm super nerd. <laughs> yeah, we might have to do like a music uh, episode, <laughs> right? Uh, heavy metal. Well, it's funny because if I have Tim Bradstreet and Mark Irwin on, we're all about. Oh yeah, 
<laughs> we can well, do it. No, with Mark Irwin, you're going to get uh, what is what is this thing? Um, uh, Rush, right? He's like oh, all yeah. about Rush. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. Is a friend of mine um, that I grew up with. I've known him since third grade. He texted me, and he had picked up the Rush uh, touring book. And I said, "I go, I go. Oh, I think my friend worked on that." And I go, "Look up Mark Irwin," and he looked, and Mark's name was in it. It's very cool. <laughs> M- Mark worked on the Master of Puppets uh, coffee table book that they did from Metallica. Oh, nice, it's huge. That's so cool. So, all right, yeah, well, Mark's a great guy. Huh? A, a friend of mine played in a band with Glenn Hughes, actually, and also he's played guitar in Deep Purple and uh, UFO. He's the guitarist of Train right now, uh, but mm. he's like a hired gun. But yeah, when he told me that he played with Glenn Hughes, I was pretty like, I was like, whoo, oh my God, that's insane. Ooh, so, Antoine Dennison has a great idea. Do a music album art cover. Oh, yeah, uh, we'll do that. That would be awesome. That would be really fun. There's some excellent, excellent cover art. For album covers, you know, yeah, that would be really, really fun. But yeah, Rainbow's great too. <laughs> oh man, we could have a lot of fun with album cover art. Yeah, man. And they're even they're starting to do it again. Like I got a uh somebody, a friend of mine sent me a um it was a soundtrack to uh a, an old uh, Italian western, but it was the whole cover was done by Jeff Darrow. So oh, and even wow. you open it up. I'll have to pull that out if we do that yeah. episode because it's a lot of fun. Dude, okay, that's a great idea. Thank you, Antoine. I love that. That would be really fun. Maybe we'll have to. Maybe we're gonna fast track that for next week. I don't know. Hey, Frazetta can get in as well because Molly Hatchet Frazetta stuff. <laughs> yeah, Wolf Mother. I, he's done at least one Wolf Mother cover. The first one. Yeah. Not, I think. I think they've used his work on two. So okay, well we're gonna say goodbye to all of you, and then we'll say goodbye to each other. But. Uh, I'm just going to leave it with Storm Thorgerson for people who know his album cover art and Ar- Ar- Aubrey Powell. Those are two of my favorites. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, you know, Drew Struzan did a Sabbath cover. Do you know that? Oh, no, I didn't. That's oh, yeah, yeah, God, we're de- okay. We're definitely going to have to get into this. He did a cover for Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And he did an Alice Cooper cover. But we'll talk about that on the episode. Oh, for sure. Uh, my okay. mind is racing already. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, we'll talk to you all, all right. later. All right, bye. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope it was fun and uh, gave you a little bit of a distraction from the world. Yeah. <laughs> later. Right. Later. Okay. <laughs>